Mr. Mackey, good morning to you. The switch. Thank uh, you, Your Honor. This the interpreter is going to respectfully ask the witness to uh, get yeah. close to the mic. Well, yeah, we'll do it. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, to the extent you can, raise your right hand so you can swear you in, okay? Do you swear or affirm the testimony about the guilty of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth of God? Please be seated. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Mackey, uh, try to speak into the microphones and just make sure you speak up and project if you would, okay? Yes, sir. All right, go ahead, Mr. Freaks. Would you state your name, spelling both your first and last name, sir? Yes, Arne, A-R-N-E, Mackey, M-A-K-I. Sir, how old are you? 46. And you are presently a resident in the Iowa Department of Corrections, correct? Yes. And where are you serving your time? in Oakdale right now. Uh, what charge are you serving your time on? Uh, domestic violence. And what is your projected discharge date? Uh, December 4th. Of this year? Yes. And the co conviction you find yourself uh, serving time for, out of what county did you get that conviction? Sagarney. That's Keokuk County? Correct. Are you from Iowa originally? What was that? Are you from Iowa originally? No, I'm from uh, Upper Michigan. When did you move to Iowa? July 20, uh, excuse me, um, it was the end of July, or end of June. Of? Uh, the 25th, somewhere around there. Of 2020? Yes. So you've been in Iowa about a year? So far now, yes. Okay. Uh, did you move here because of family? No, I moved here because uh, my ex-girlfriend wanted to be close to her mom. And she was the victim of your offense? Correct. Now, you found yourself in the Iowa Department of Corrections, but before then, were you in the Keokuk County Jail? Yes. And how long did you serve time in the Keokuk County Jail? Three months, from July 26th through October 19th of 2020. And during your time in the Keokuk County Jail, did you come to know an individual named Gavin Jones. Yes. And was Mr. Jones also in the Keokuk County Jail during that time? Yes. Uh, do you recall how long a period of time you served in the Keokuk County Jail with Mr. Jones? About 21 days. Did you become friends, so to speak, with Mr. Jones? Yes. I'm going to put in front of you on the TV screen there uh, what's been marked previously as Defendant's Exhibit C. Let me know if you see it. I think the court's going to need to bring it up on the screen.
Is it up? No, no, no. Are you hooked in? Yes. I know it just worked like 15 minutes ago. If you want me to do it old school, I can do it old school. Let's do that. Okay. Permission to approach? Yes. Permission granted. Mackey, I've shown you what's been marked for identification purposes. It's Defendant's Exhibit C. Do you recognize the individual in that photograph? Yes, I do. Does that photograph fairly and accurately depict the individual that uh, you know as Gavin Jones? Correct. And is that how he appeared when you and he were in the Keokuk County Jail together? Just longer hair. Um, I'd offer Exhibit C, Your Honor. Any objection? Your Honor, uh, I'd object to the extra information in this exhibit as uh, contains several identification and uh, information that the defendant's not qualified to testify to in addition to the photograph. Um, there's no foundation or authentication uh, laid to introduce this extraneous evidence outside of the photograph. So I'd object on that basis. Here's what we'll do. Uh, I'll admit C into evidence, and I would ask that uh, if the state has any concerns about any uh, information that's contained in there, share that with the defense, make sure it's redacted before it's put into the system. Very well. Now, Mr. D uh, Mackey, when you were in jail with Mr. Jones, did you know why Mr. Jones was in jail? No, I wasn't. Okay. Um, did Mr. Jones get released from the Keokuk County Jail prior to you being released? Yes. Um, when Mr. Jones was released from the Keokuk County Jail, did you and he have a conversation about what he was doing next? No. Was he going to another jail? No. Did he need bail money? Yes, he did. Why did he need, did he need bail money? Because he was afraid to go back to Marion County. He, he was afraid of being, being indicted. Is that what he told you? Yes. Did he tell you why he was afraid of being indicted? No, he wouldn't tell me. 
Was he able to post bail out of Keokuk County to, to avoid going to Marion County Jail? Yes, I did with my help. Okay, you gave him money? Correct. How much money did you have available to give him? I told him, I said if he got 100 I would give him the 70 So you gave him $70? Correct. When you uh, were booked out of the Keokuk County Jail, were you given a, a book out sheet? No. Okay. Um, but the records of the Keokuk County Jail would establish you gave him, in fact, $70? Correct. Did you have a conversation with the sheriff when you asked to transfer money to Gavin Jones? Yes, I did. Uh, Cause you had to tell someone to move seventy dollars from your inmate account over to Gavin Jones's inmate account, right? Yes. And what did the sheriff say to you? Um, can I say his name? Sure. Um, Adam Clark took me to the side, brought me to it on another room. He looked at me and he said, "Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to bail him out?" And I told him, I said that he's a troubled kid and that he needs direction. I felt bad for him. He said he's not going to do nothing for you when when he gets out or threaten your family. And I just said no. Okay. So you'd gotten to a situation where you kind of felt some empathy for for Mr. Jones. Correct. Did Mr. Jones, uh, over that period of time you two were in jail, begin to confide in you? Yeah, he got comfortable with me. How much older? do you think you are then, Mr. Jones? Jones is 21. And you again are how old? 46. Okay. Back up just a little bit so you aren't getting that. Um, during the time you were in Keokuk County, um, did Mr. Jones talk about the death of a woman named Molly Tibbetts with you? Yes, he did. And when he spoke to you, was he speaking to you in this comfortable fashion or was it braggadocious? Describe to me the, the context. He didn't have no emotion. He just was talking like we talk right now. Yeah. So he wasn't bragging? No. Wasn't uh, showing off? No, he was just serious. How did the con uh, conversation begin about Molly Tibbetts? Uh, when I went back in from from talking to Adam Clark, I went back in and he asked me what he said. And I told him, I said, that he wanted to know if you were gonna do anything for me when, when you leave or threaten my family. So this conversation occurred shortly before Mr. Jones bailing out? Yes, because he had like 13 more days left, somewhere around there. So the conversation then just he just started to tell you about he, his involvement in the death of Molly Tibbetts. He no, he told me um, when I told him that he's like, yeah, he he knows that I'm dangerous, and I just kind of shrugged my shoulders like, yeah, I don't think so. And then he's like, do you do you know the Tibbet case? I said, no, I've only been here a month. I don't know nobody. Okay. So Mr. Jones told you that the deputy knew he was dangerous, and then he goes on to tell you or ask you if you know about the Tibbetts case. Yeah. And again, he's, his affect is, is just normal? Yeah. Okay. And did it stop there, the conversation? And then I, I told him, I, I said, uh, I said, no, he's like, yeah, he's like, I killed her. I'm like, I said, I don't believe you. And then he said, uh, he says, you know, the guy that's being charged for it right now, I said, no, I don't. He's like, reset him up. He's like, it was a sex trafficking case gone wrong, and I stabbed her to death and put her in a tarp, me and my black friend that doesn't speak English that good, and set him up. And I still told him, I said, I don't think you're telling him. I don't, I don't believe you. And why did you not believe him? Because why would someone tell me something so heinous like that? I, I, and... I just thought he was trying to be tough. Okay. So he just tells you that he killed her. He told, he told you he stabbed her? Stabbed her to death. And he told you that the guy that they had charged is the wrong guy? Correct. He says reset him up. He did not kill him. 
How is his demeanor at this point? Is he still pretty? Still normal. And then I told him, and I told him, I said, uh, what's, what's the sex trafficker? What's that all about? I said, what's that? I said, I don't know nothing about it. And that's when he started telling me about uh, him being kicked out of his house for since he's been 13, living in trap houses and on the street around Des Moines. Okay. And he said that uh, him and this guy named Dalton Hansen, which also I need to add that his AKA street name was called Debo, and they would be living in these trap houses at that age. And that's when uh, the off office, when, when I was, was speaking with Dalton, Dalton Hansen, he said that he uh, was in the trap house when Adam Clark arrested Gavin Jones. And, and then I told him, I said, what's, what's with the sex trafficker? And then he started telling me that it's a person that calls this guy and wants some specific girl, color hair, eyes, weight, and this sex trafficker will hire another guy to go steal a vehicle and and stake out the neighborhood and and get this girl or whoever and bring her to the trap house and then do the thing. Did he uh, give you any type of idea as to how this particular operation he was working with was run, like any players? Uh, yes. He told me the name, but I, I forgot the name. But um, he said uh, he'd always see this one big guy come in dressed up nice and clean with always a new car. With And he would talk to these other guys that were at the trap house. I don't know if they were dealing drugs or... But he said he'd always see uh, women girls coming in and out, going down the basement. He said he's seen a, weird, a lot of weird things. Did he give you the location of the trap house or any trap no, house? No, he didn't. Did he mention anything about uh, law enforcement? Yes, he did. What did he say? He, he said uh, the, the uh, sex trafficker lived in Tama and he had a wife with two, two daughters and that he'd have the team of police work for this guy to get these girls. And did, did you say team of police or did you mention the team of county sheriff? No, just team of police. Okay. And the team of county police or team of police, uh, would they, according to Gavin, help abduct women? That's what Gavin told me. Okay. Did he give you a name of any team of police? No, he didn't. He says, you know, this sex trafficker knows a lot of important people. Okay. Did he indicate to you that he saw Molly Tibbetts in a trap house? No, he didn't. He didn't tell you that he saw Molly in the basement of a house? Yes, he had. Okay. Tell us about that. He said, well, going further with, with the sex trafficker, he was um, asked Gavin Jones and Dalton, like he asked this guy and asked him why these two kids were in this trap house. And the guy said that they were homeless. So the sick trafficker took these two under his wing and started uh, uh, paying for them to go steal vehicles for, us, for them, for him. And that's when, when they stole the vehicle, he, uh, him, Gavin Jones, Dalton Hansen and his black friend that couldn't speak English were stole a vehicle and then had a shootout with the police and then drove up to this house and ran down the basement. And when Gavin and his friend were down there, he heard a noise from the room. He opened the door, he seen a woman bound to a chair and gagged. And was he able to identify that woman? He said, he, later on he did, he went upstairs and said that if the police went to the next house over, they would have caught her. 
And I said, who's that? Tibbetts. And that's when the sex trafficker said that, that he had to get rid of her. So he went back down there and stabbed her to death and then put her in a tarp. Did you talk about how they were able to set up the, the man who was eventually convicted? What's that? Did he, did he say how he was able to set up the man who was eventually convicted? Yes. He told me he went back upstairs, he, and uh, the sex trafficker said that the defendant almost tipped him off. So that's when why they had to get rid of him and then take the body and plant it to look like he did it. Did he say why they picked this particular person? No. Because they almost tipped, because he, the, the defendant almost tipped the sex trafficker off. That's what Gavin told me. Now, you didn't tell this story until the almost the very end of Mr. Bahena's trial, right? What's that? You didn't tell any of this stuff until the very end of Mr. Bahena's trial. Me? Yes. I haven't, no, I, the, I haven't said nothing for a whole year because I didn't really believe him. And when I did believe him, I, I seen two, two uh, uh, clips on Fox News. When you saw the clips on Fox News, what were the clips that caught your attention? One of them, the first one was uh, uh, with the defendant. Uh, they were saying that he had a family and, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, had no criminal record. And the second clip showed him, said that he didn't kill her and that he was set up by two men. And right there, I told myself, my conscience told me, I said I should say something, even if it's not true. Okay. So based upon those clips, what did you do? I went and talked to my boss at work. And a chaplain? You took chaplain. a chaplain? Yes. Now, are, are you getting any benefit out of telling this story? No, I'm not. You're not getting your sentence reduced? No, I'm not. So no matter what you say here today, you're still going to be out of prison in December? Correct. Nobody's offering you any money? No. No one's offering you any promises of uh, a shorter parole, are they? No. Uh, What's the culture like in prison for people who come forward and testify in open court? Uh, no idea. Is it good? Probably not, but I'd rather rather do the right thing. Okay. So you're getting absolutely zero benefit out of telling this version of what Gavin Jones told you? Zero. Okay. That's all I have, Your Honor. Any cross? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Mackey, you said the info that you got on this case was from the news, is that correct? Correct. And there were two particular clips that you saw uh, that made you think about uh, what you'd been told, or that the defendant had a family? Yes. And that the defendant said he didn't kill Molly Tibbetts? Is that right? No, I seen it. He said where he had a family. They were talking about that he had a family, uh, a wife and kids, and that he didn't have a criminal record. Was there a second clip? Yes. And in that clip, uh, the defendant said that he didn't kill Molly Tibbetts, is that right? Correct. Did you watch any of the trial testimony? No, I didn't. Do you know any of the facts that were presented at the trial? None. Did you say that Gavin Jones told you that he'd been kicked out of the house when he was uh, 13 years old? Is that yes. Right? And Gavin Jones told you that he'd been staying at trap houses in Des Moines and other places since that time, is that right? Yes. Do you know how old Gavin Jones was in 2017? No, I don't. He's about 21 years old now, correct? Yes. 
So four years ago, he would have been 17, correct? Correct. Did Gavin Jones tell you anything about where he was in late 2017 and early 2018? No, he hasn't. You weren't aware that he was in the state's custody from September 2017 to December 2017? No. Were you aware that he was in a rehab facility from December 2017 to July 2018? No. He didn't tell you that? No, he hasn't. Did Gavin Jones tell you that after he left the rehab facility, he went to an assisted living under court supervision? And tell me none of that. <coughs> Was Gavin Jones supposed to pay you back the money that you gave him for his bond? No. I'd like to go over the story that Gavin Jones told you. Uh, he said he and Dalton Hansen were staying at trap houses, is that correct? Yes. And these were actually drug houses? Yes. And Gavin told you that while he was at one of these drug houses, he made an arrangement with the owner to steal cars, correct? Not the owner. It was a person that always was, was there to do whatever they do. And the agreement was made by Gavin Jones and Dalton Hansen with this visitor at the drug house, is that right? Yeah, the, the sex trafficker guy told me, told, told this one guy and asked him why they were there. And Gavin told you that he and Dalton Hansen agreed to steal cars for this individual? Yes. And they, in fact, did steal cars for this individual? Yes, a lot of them. At least that's what Gavin told you? That's what he, yes. And when would this have occurred? He didn't, he didn't tell me. He didn't give me no dates or nothing. He just, this is, that's what he said. And Gavin Jones told you that while he was stealing cars for this individual, he got in a shootout with police, correct? Correct. Did he say when that happened? He didn't say that. Did he say there are any charges filed as a result of that? Um, the only one that said anything about it was uh, Dalton Hansen after uh, Gavin Jones left. Uh, he said that he was afraid of being indicted. And I told him, I said, for what for? And he said, for a shootout for, with the police. So this drug house, was this in New Sharon? I have no idea. Mr. Mackey, you made a comment that the defendant became involved because he tipped off the sex trafficker. What, what did you mean by that? I, that's what, that's what Gavin said. I, I don't know anything why he said that, but that's what he said. You were interviewed a couple different times about uh, the statements that Gavin Jones made to you, correct? Correct. You were interviewed by law enforcement? Um, just state detective. And you also spoke with an investigator uh, that defense counsel sent to talk with you? In Mount Pleasant, yes. I'm sorry, the of the answer. And during those interviews, 
you stated that Gavin Jones told you that Molly Tibbetts was wrapped in plastic. Is that correct? Not plastic. Today you said it was a tarp. It's a tarp. In one of those interviews you said plastic, correct? Might have. If the written report says plastic, would that be a better uh, record of what you said than your memory? Uh, could be. And you stated in one of those interviews that Gavin Jones told you that he and this under, other individual cut up Molly's body, correct? Yes. Are you aware that the facts of the case and the evidence did not show that particular fact? Um, I don't know, but that's that's what he did tell me, but I didn't believe him. You stated to investigators that this man at a Tama was wealthy. Is that correct? Yes. And do you recall telling uh, one of the interviewers that the reason uh, Gavin told you that Molly had to be killed was because the search was getting too close? Speak. Uh, say that again. Do you recall telling uh, one of the interviewers that the, Gavin had told you the reason that Molly was killed is because the search for her was getting too close to the location where she was being held? No. You don't recall that? No. Do you deny telling in interviewers that? I didn't. I didn't say that. So if that statement's reflected in the record of the interviews with you, that would be incorrect? That'd be incorrect. Mr. Mackey, just to be clear on time frame, so you were in the Keokuk County Jail with Gavin Jones in July and August of 2020, correct? Yes. And you went to prison in November of 2020, correct? I left October 19th. You went to prison on October 19th, 2020? Yes. And you didn't tell anyone about these statements that Gavin Jones supposedly made to you until May 26th of this year, correct? Correct. <clears throat> no further questions at this time, Your Honor. 